Maggie, Nicole won't let me keep my protein yogurt in the work fridge anymore. Tell her she has to let me. Sorry, Josh. No liquids, gels, or aerosols. Which one of those is Brogurt? This, this is, is a hot dog, dog is, is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Inaiti. And we're internet chefs over on Good Mythical Morning and the Mythical Kitchen channels. And when we're not making gourmet appetizers out of gas station food, that sounds wacky, mm-hmm. Nicole. You, <laughs> can find, wacky. you can find us here breaking down the world's biggest food debates. That's right, Josh. And today we're going to debate <laughs> the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard this on this is, podcast. Where do you think this ranks in terms of our Absurdity? dumbest podcast? I want to say it's dumb. I think it's absurd. It's absurd. It is very absurd, but it came from a real life situation. Four. Four. Oh, four out of ten. No, <laughs> four out of two hundred. Oh, this is four. Oh, oh, this is the fourth most absurd podcast we've done. Yeah, there was the one where I argued that soup doesn't exist. That was soup weird. doesn't exist. Soup certainly exists. The There's ocean is a soup it. with with Hank Green. That was fun. Was pretty absurd. Where um, is a hot dog? In your returning body, returning back to being yeah, a hot yeah. dog once hot you dog digest body. it because it's in your intestines. That yeah. was probably the dumbest. Yeah, I, think. I don't know. I think that Ooh, might have been what came one. first, the chicken or the egg? That was really stupid. That was before we really found our stride in the podcast. <laughs> what we're talking about today is is peanut butter a liquid? No, it's a paste. I well, okay, but it's this, pasty. This came up because a man tried to take a jar of peanut butter <laughs> through the TSA security line, so which crazy. one like. I'm not justifying the TSA's existence or workflow here. I love TSA agents. Someone bringing <laughs> a whole jar of peanut butter through TSA, I'm immediately slightly suspicious. You know, it just like on a personal level. If I'm flying with him, I'm like, this is a weird man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still think that as an American, it's your right to travel with as much peanut butter as you want. Um, but he tried to get peanut butter through TSA and they said, sorry, no liquids, gels or aerosols. And he mm-hmm. responds with, you tell me which one of those you think peanut butter is, because obviously it's not in any of those categories. Um, a, a gel. I mean, I think in, in those three ca- categories, it would it would be a gel. What do you mean? A peanut butter can't be a gel. Like it's just... the same consistency as toothpaste. I suppose. I, yeah, I guess if toothpaste isn't allowed. Thank you for listening to a hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like the peanut butter thing is really interesting because then you start going down the rabbit hole of what if yeah. I took a whole jar of peanut butter and I smeared it between bread and I brought that in through TSA line because I want to mm. feed my family a cheap and healthy meal and not go to the yeah. Wolfgang Puck Express and get a $15 tomato basil $15? bread bowl. $15? Bro, Wolfgang $30? Puck Express. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. What are you talking about? Their prepackaged sandwich is like 15 bucks. Oh, yeah. Airport food. What a scam that. Is. Do they heat it up? Uh, the no, 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 no. If really? you well, okay. So there's the Wolfgang book. I I don't travel often, but I've it done it more <laughs> recently. Kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm the same. You go to Wolfgang Puck Express and you can just go through the little checkout line. They have crappy little Seven Eleven sandwiches yes. that you can just buy. But and they have like, like one cool ingredient. Yeah, it'll yeah. be like basil pesto, and there's yeah. like a little green splooge a on there. Little and green splooge. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, ah. yeah. But you know, you, you got to catch your flight in 15 minutes, and mm. uh, you want to poop before you get on the plane because yeah. then you're like, well, I don't certainly don't want to poop in the air. Um, you don't but, like pooping in airplanes? Oh my god, that is my nightmare. Pooping really? on an airplane is the worst experience I've ever had. Really? Yes, I would rather I fly like Spirit it. Airlines exclusively for the rest of my life than poop in an airplane. It is my knees <laughs> cannot, Nicole. My hips cannot oh, open yeah, wide you're, enough you're tall. to get my anal cavity to release. You're tall. You're tall. I'm five three, so I fit nice and snug in the little container. That sounds really great, but yeah. I do love pooping in public airport bathrooms. I'll tell you That's that. That's disgusting. Because everybody That's is disgusting. at their worst in a public airport bathroom so you can do whatever you lugging want your I put luggage, headphones in <laughs> I put headphones in I'm listening to dubstep not caring what my body sounds like oh and just goodness. ruining the days of everyone next to me That's some horrible. Republican senator next to me is sticking his foot into my stall and I'm <laughs> like that's your right sir <laughs> um anyways the point is peanut butter so you're not allowed to take that in because uh, apparently the TSA classifies it, quote, as a spreadable, which is in the liquids category. OK. Well, what I'm trying to think is, is how large was it? Like 64 ounces? Like how, they how did much not was give, they they, didn't all specify. they said was a jar it's, of peanut butter. It's more than the amount you're allowed to bring on is, is what it is. Yes, correct. Yes. If you brought a snack size thing of Skippy with like the little crackers that That's they sell. That's fine. That would have been fine. What's the limit? Like four ounces? Mm, let's see. Which let's is still like a fair amount says. of peanut butter. Can we talk about the amount of peanut butter this person was bringing through yeah. TSA? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Get flagged. 
How much liquid can you take on a plane? 3.4 ounces right now, 100 milliliters or less per item. So what what I'm thinking is why couldn't they just get a bunch of three ounce jars and put it all in there? Like, Wait, why... can you do that? I think so. You can so. just get a bunch yeah. of... I think that's legal. Yeah. That's weird. Well, it's allowed. Everything about TSA is weird, though. I, can I just say something? I love and respect TSA agents so much. They literally keep us so safe, and I'm really grateful. Are you they serious? Exist. They keep yeah. us so but, safe? What do you but mean? Let me tell you, but let me tell you something. <laughs> I <laughs> They don't. Like, statistically, they do not keep let us safe. Let me tell you. The fact that I have to take off my shoes really <laughs> makes me sad. Yeah, it sucks. No one likes it. To, and the fact that I have to take off my laptop out of my bag makes me sad. But I understand why the precautions exist. Sure. Well, so okay. I'm not upset at the fact that I, yeah, it's annoying, but like it's worth the, my shoes being off. I hate it when other people take their sandals off and they have their bare feet on. That's like, me, on baby. If you have, if you are at the airport, and I you're don't not wear wearing, socks ever, so I am barefoot. That is, listen, listen. This is what security that, theater gets you. That is disgusting. When I see people with their bare feet, just like, oh, it's like, did talk, you not know you were going to the I airport? I talked about pooping to dubstep in public <laughs> bathrooms. What do you mean that's disgusting? I just, I just listen. I understand why the TSA exists, and I'm grateful for for their existence. And even if uh. they yell at me, and sometimes they go. Take off your shoes! Or like, you know, they're like, take your jacket off. Make sure your pockets are empty. Take off your belt. Yeah, I love the real mean <laughs> ones. I'm just like, okay, okay, I'm so sorry. Like, so uh-huh. But like, I, I understand why they do that. So I don't hate them. I respect them. And I, if you're listening and you're a TSA agent, I love you. So all of the modern TSA rules, right? This stuff all came out after 9-11 yeah. because America was very fearful. Very and fearful. needed to do something to get people to be comfortable in airports again, yada, yada, because yeah. people would stop flying after that. And there were like a fair amount of incidents after 9-11 mm-hmm. that continued to shift the rules. Mm-hmm. So the shoe bomber. Yeah, Remember there was a dude bomber. that had a bomb on a shoe yes. and he was trying to scratch it off or was, was scratch it off. He was trying to activate, activate it. it. <laughs> people swarmed him. So then it was like, all right, take your shoes off. And then there was somebody who tried to get a bunch of liquid explosives through. Uh-huh. Um, and so that in 2006 is what caused the no liquids, gels, or aerosols rule. Yeah. Which I get the impetus Thanks to make those rules. <laughs> However, the TSA is literally like the biggest waste of government resources. It does absolutely is nothing. It? So in every mm. single audit that they've ever done, where they have what were called red teams to try and pass dangerous items through TSA... In a couple of the recent ones in 2016, there was a 95% failure rate <gasps> to literally just catch drugs, weapons, Are and explosives. Are you kidding me? What about when they have the little sniffy dogs and they make you walk separate from I, like your person? I don't know what to tell you. The dogs are broken. Uh, I don't. Know, I don't know. But like they don't always have the dogs, you know, and you can hide stuff in other stuff. What? You know, it's just there's ways to trick it. And point is, if you're, if you're highly motivated, you, you're probably going to get stuff through TSA. That's so crazy because, like, I just think morally how wrong it is to do that. So, like, I've never tried to, like, sneak, like, I don't oh, know. Oh, you've never tried to sneak li- liquid explosives through no, no, an airplane, no, Nicole? Wow, good for you. Or... You're an American hero for that. No, no. <laughs> Shut up. No, like, it's just so weird to me that, like, they, they they exist, but still he said 95% failure rate. That's crazy. There was an me. average failure rate of like above 80% That's in all the shocking. audits they did. Yeah, and so and there were even crazy things that they so found. We need to we're give not them just more debating. Money. So we need to give them no, more money. Because so here's they what you do. Better. Here's what you do what? when you give them more money. What? So they got several hundred million dollars um for new screening machines, and they okay. found out that within several years, 99% of them were still just sitting in storage. Like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? It is just an absolutely Come defunct on, agency bro. that does nothing, but it uh apparently makes people, yourself including. Uh, feel safer. I on do feel airplanes. safer. I do. I do. Yeah, which you know that's part of life. The theater of they call it security theater. Adam Conover did a fantastic episode I'm about this. I'm down with theater security. Th- security theater. I'm down. And there's so much uh, theater in like the food world as well. With uh, I I would call it <laughs> sanitation theater. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the wear, gloves. Wearing gloves. Yeah. And it's like, no, that doesn't actually make you any safer. Yeah. Um, Temp check yourself. <laughs> my point is, if if the rules go so far that you can't bring peanut butter on an airplane, but you can bring a peanut butter sandwich. Like, that's just an inconsistent rule. What about Reese's Cups? Are those, like, grenades? <laughs> <laughs> Are Reese's Cups considered grenades? Reese's Pieces? I don't know. I don't know Trapital? enough about explosives. This is so sc- It's just scary. I mean, if it's if we can't bring peanut butter on our planes, what are we doing? What are we really doing? You can't smoke on airplanes anymore. You <laughs> can't even good. enjoy a spoonful yeah. of peanut butter with your cigarette. Maybe. I'm trying to think because, uh, like, whenever, like, I, I've traveled with a lot of, like, religious people that, uh-huh. like, bring food on the plane. Yeah. So, but I don't think any of them have, like, brought, they, I think they brought hummus, like, on the plane. 
They've brought a hummus. If you can't, bro, hummus is infinitely more dangerous than peanut butter. <laughs> no, Are you it's kidding not. me? It's a nut paste. No, I can, oh, I can hide paste. so many things in hummus, Nicole. I just, oh, just razor <laughs> wire the, in there. I'm trying to think, like, like, <laughs> We've brought like discs of hummus that are like more than three hours. Yeah, ounces. they fail 95% of the time, oh, Nicole. They just man. didn't catch you. <laughs> but they can find my hairspray. <laughs> this is just frustrating. But let me tell you, it's just it's just so annoying how how a jar of peanut butter is like the problem and I've got so much like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh recognition from like the news and stuff of all things. Like if you were to actually call this is a stupid thing that I think about a lot though, right? What's like up? peanut butter is a solid at room temperature, you heat it up, it shows a characteristics of a liquid because there's hydrogenated oils in there, sure, right? Sure, yeah. So to me, like, you freeze peanut butter, Uh huh. does that suddenly become a solid? Because even if they're calling it a spreadable, you, you tell me you can spread a frozen the peanut butter? The issue is... What about a braised meat? The, <laughs> the issue is this. I think the container with... Was it unsealed or was it sealed? I think it was sealed. It was sealed? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know this, this person's is, this motivations. This is what it is. Honestly, I think maybe the container that it was in was just jarring and <laughs> jarring, get it? And if, if if it wasn't like in those little like little packets, I don't think it yeah. would have been a problem. I think I think the person who brought the peanut butter on just didn't do their due diligence. Yeah, again, I agree that bringing a whole thing of peanut butter on is just, just generally that's, suspicious. Like, why would you bring a jar of peanut like, like, why wouldn't you just, I don't know, buy it when you land in, I don't know, Poland or wherever you're going? And uh, you know what? A lot of Europe doesn't mess with peanut butter, though. But that's the thing. Like, you know, peanut I'm just butter saying, so... if you need to bring your own peanut butter to a place, I get oh, that. Wait, can you even bring peanut butter on a plane because of the peanut allergies? That's a great question. Maybe, maybe it's related yeah. to that. I don't think they've banned people just having peanuts on airplanes, right? <laughs> I think they can't. They can't give you peanuts. Like certain airlines don't give you peanuts no more. Oh no, I've never, ha- I've never, I haven't had peanuts on an airplane Since in that was years like 10, and years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe it Which was to like, me that that makes sense. That's I think we should put peanuts on airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who's deathly allergic to peanuts. You'd kill your friend over and no, no, no. They're doing like this really cool experiment. Sorry, Eric. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell people this, but like he's doing this really cool experimental thing. He's like deathly allergic to peanuts, where they give him like a little. Of peanut, and then they monitor him for like an for like hours oh, to God. see if he'll die or not. <laughs> Something like that. I'm obviously paraphrasing, but I think if we expose people to peanuts, then the next generation. Yeah, everyone. This is generational allergies. epidemiologist uh, Nicole Anaity here, <laughs> with a lot great, of health advice that she is eminently qualified. I would to have give. been a great doctor. We've already and talked about this. And I am super qualified to give airline security <laughs> advice as somebody who took like three counterterrorism classes in college. Oh, that's so cool. You Did know, you yeah. ever talk about like the? Uh, like the liquids and like the salt, like the aerosols and stuff. Oh, we basically just talked about the idea that it was, you know, America trying to emotionally recover um, Got it. from. And also like anytime you are trying to make people safe, right? What yeah. you are actually saying is there is danger. You are not saying you are safe. You are saying there, there is, is danger. danger. Ergo, yeah. we have made you safe. And so it was just a lot of ways to justify invading Iraq and Afghanistan in 2000s and war. Those like ultimately really unjustified and weapons of mass destruction were never actually found. Um, so Excuse point me. is, there's a lot of you know <laughs> my the stupid are jar weapons of, of mass destruction. <laughs> that was gross. I got weapons of ass destruction. <laughs> I, f- I farts not anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's like the impetus behind a lot of those rules, right? I think my dad. So, sorry, so my joking. dad used to work in airports, right? That was the thing. Your dad worked in airports. My dad worked in airport cargo management growing up, and then he sort of okay. aged out of the job in the nineties. Okay, right. Um, but he saw, I believe, an Israeli sniper to shoot a terrorist through like three planes of glass <gasps> on a plane. Yeah, what? Like, airplane terrorism. I love where this podcast is going. Can I just say, this I love where this podcast so is going. Metal. I'm loving this conversation. Yeah, okay. yeah. So like uh, terrorism on on airplanes, like it's nothing new. It was going on in the 70s as well. It's the thing uh, that we've always dealt yeah, with. Yeah. 9-11 is obviously the thing that that, that really... Um, where were you? We'll talk about that later. Okay. Well, yeah, this is... <laughs> <laughs> where were you in 9-11? intentionally doing a 9-11 podcast? <laughs> kind of, I guess, but keep going. Okay, Israeli sniper? Yeah, that was pretty much it. But I just remember my dad telling me these stories of like terrorism in airports because he worked in like the Washington D.C. airport. As oh, well, like, really? Uh, Dulles, Dulles International. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and then that's why I like moved so much because he was working there. I was born in Maryland. He got a job at Kansas City Airport. Moved there, and then uh, he worked at wow. LAX at some time. No way! And then remember I told the story about how my dad taught me how to kill snakes driving down the runway that's at Palomar right. Airport. That was when he aged Where's out of the Palomar? job. Where's Palomar? It's like San Diego. 
Okay. But it's like a really small, like private plane airport, yeah. like little yeah. puddle jumpers. Um, but yeah, yeah. So like I grew up with these stories. And so nice. for me, it was all just, you know, yeah. What do you feel about TSA pre-check? Oh, I'm the only person that doesn't have TSA pre-check that I ever travel with now. And I feel like a piece of crap. I feel like a schmuck and everybody hates me for clear. it. I have clear. What the hell does clear mean? You, you scan your eyeball <laughs> and you go in. I... <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's incredible. Uh, I wonder if this person had TSA pre-check or if they had, I don't know, clear, they could just go through. I bet That's they could. That's what I wonder. Um, Jared Kassebaum, Annalise's very we funny husband. We love Jared Kassebaum. We love follow Jared. Follow them on socials. Yeah, follow Jared. He's coming out with yeah, a full-length so comedy funny. album soon. But he has a great bit about TSA pre-check where oh, yeah? I didn't know how it works, but he's just like, you literally meet with a federal agent for five minutes yep. and then they decide this person probably won't be a terrorist for the next 10 years. Yeah, it's super chill. And he's like, I literally just told him I was a comedian and then did part of my bit and he said, ah, you seem like you won't blow up a plane. No way. Yeah, that's like that's, so funny. that's the process. So yeah, all I did was some guy was like, hey, do you have an American Express card? I'm like, well, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, here you go. Here's a rebate for the full transaction. Just swipe your card and uh, you could just skip the line and bring whatever you want on the airplane exclude like there's what do you, some, you don't what do you do well, you don't have to take off your shoes you have to I take your take laptop a, out of your bag nope, and you get and a shorter cross, line that's it i'm not sure like i cross the whole line oh god oh anytime okay, if you're ever wondering <laughs> am i be, safe in a situation and you find out that somebody can pay a hundred dollars to not go through any of rebate. that no it's a rebate they pay, they give you back the hundred God, God. Because they know oh. people won't do the rebate. They won't oh. do it. It's like that whole Nathan for you sketch. They won't do the <laughs> rebate. Air travel, man. It's, what a fun time. <laughs> That's the funny thing is, though, is I love traveling. I but love I, traveling, too. But I'm not going to bring... Let me tell you. Unless I have extreme dietary restrictions, yeah. I will, like, put it in my carry-on. Not carry I'll put it in my, what is it called? Check baggage. Yeah. I don't know why this person just decided... I don't know what was going on. I don't on think we him. should blame them. It's a reasonable thing, though. Do I think it's suspicious and weird? Yes, but I... I defend I to the death reasonable. his right to bring peanut butter on an airplane. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's something sus about it. I don't know. That's I a lot just... of calories. Maybe they're keto. You don't know. Oh, let me. I have a perfect example. So whenever my mom comes back from Iran and mm. stuff, she brings back, you know, snacks. Sogati is what it's called, like little snacks and gifts and stuff. Anything liquid, she knows, paste, liquid, whatever, tamarind paste, she brings. She doesn't bring it on the plane. She brings it in her carry. Well, you, what what if you wanted to eat the tamarind paste on the plane? You're giving it as a gift. I don't know. Well, maybe the peanut butter wasn't a gift. Maybe the peanut butter was a gift. Oh, that would have been fun. Imagine like you're like, what's a country that doesn't have pe- Germany doesn't have peanut butter? Yeah, let's imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think the don't accuracy think Ger- of that yeah, is gonna yeah, yeah. sully your like reputation. Like you're just like you're just like, oh, here you go. Like, <laughs> yeah, hello, like, ich bin you know peanut butter. Done? You know, he <laughs> should have put a bow on it. <laughs> if you put a bow on the box of the jar of peanut butter, you would have just waltzed right in. <laughs> Please, my grandmother sees she's sick and it's her dying wish to have a jar of peanut butter. Um, I remember once I was traveling, I totally just forgot to take an energy drink out of my bag. Was um, it at the bottom of your bag? It was like the bottom of my bag and yeah. I probably had brought it to the gym a while ago and I was kind of rushing to travel and you know they took it out and the guy was like, yeah, we got to throw this away. And I was like, can I just chug it right now instead? And he was like, I guess. And so I just sat there and just chugged. It was one of those, it was a bang. It was like a 300 oh milligram God, of caffeine. And I just ripped Ooh, it. And I'm he just sorry. goes, hey, that was pretty nuts, man. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, dude. <laughs> and just walked through. Um, there was a story of a lady finishing a whole bottle of brandy because they wouldn't let oh, her get on the plane. Oh, God. Oh, God. How funny. do they still allow people to drink on airplanes? I, that is the, maybe it's the commoner. I can't believe people can drink on airplanes. I hate drinking on airplanes. I hate drinking on airplanes. I want to drink right when I get there. I want to set my stuff down in the hotel, wherever I'm going, and hate. then I'm immediately going to drink. But I yeah. hate being like just a little bit less with my faculties on an airplane. Exactly, exactly. I don't even sleep better when I drink either. Me if it either, put me to me sleep, either. that'd be something. No, no, no. If I drink and I get riled up. Not like that way. I'm not like a, you know, like riled up. Like, yeah, yeah. But no, but you know, like drink and I get excited. I want to talk. Yeah. I want to hang out. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. Yeah. And I, one time I, I took, I had like three drinks on a plane and I just got, I got like the spins immediately. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Do you bring food on airplanes? No. Like, do you bring food from home? I bring snacks. Like what? So what I do, <laughs> just such a bad person. <laughs> what could possibly be bad? What could be morally bad w- about the snacks that you bring? If I'm leaving on a Friday, on, if I'm leaving on a Saturday, on Friday, I go to work and I take some oh, yeah. bags of chips. Yeah, listen. I take a protein bar. That's called the weekend bonus. 
You you open your backpack <laughs> near the fridge. You fill it with the free Lacroix. <laughs> you, there's apples. You can't that... bring Lacroix on a plane. Oh no, but I'm just I'm not talking about planes anymore. I'm talking about workplace theft. <laughs> um, yeah, the apples are gonna go bad anyways. <laughs> I, you know, I, I take them home. I make a little fruit crisp with it uh-huh. or something. You know, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. No, I just don't want any of the food to get wasted at work. Uh, I literally. That's why I steal all the Milano cookies. I, <laughs> I take a goldfish. I take a protein bar. I take I don't know, but I do buy water bottles at, at the airport. I buy big water bottles. I don't want to have to get up to pee. So I don't dry, I dehydrate myself before flights. I drink an energy drink. I buy a copy of Bon Appetit magazine, copy of Food and Wine magazine. You buy books at the magazine? Oh, I love it. That's my, oh my God. That's, that's my favorite thing to do is buying books books and magazines. And I found books that I really love. Some of my favorite authors I've gotten at like a Hudson News. You ever heard of one of these? A cell phone, buddy? I know, but I like, I love reading paperbacks on a, on a plane. And that's almost like the only time where, you know, I don't have anything else I can do. I don't want to buy the Wi-Fi. I don't want to figure out how to work that. If it's like a Southwest flight and there's no in-flight entertainment type of thing. Does Southwest not have in-flight entertainment? That sucks. I don't think they do. That's horrific. Yeah. Oh, United though. You get all them movies to pick from. Ooh. Yeah, you get to play games. Ooh, you that's You ever play so fun. games with like with like everyone? No, <laughs> but but reading paperback. So I love doing that. And then I'll get an energy drink so I can stay up to read. Oh, but nice. then I let that bleed all the moisture out of my body, so I don't have to get up to pee. So I'm just sitting there and reading for five hours. Yeah, all wired you really on rock have a stars. phobia of the of the bathroom. On the like, airplane. Air, airplane bathrooms are really really bad for tall people. And then I sometimes you're peeing and you try and like. I'm gonna stand up because this is a video. You, you sometimes pee and you gotta brace your knees against the side. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you pee in an airplane because there's turbulence, you gotta brace your knees. You gotta push your knees out. Like I don't ever do spot. that. Push your knees out. I don't ever so that have way, to do that because if your knees are in, then you can rattle around and then you, you pee is this on yourself. You pee sitting down. Then you pee on yourself. <laughs> you pee what? No, I'm standing up. But <laughs> I have to hunch. Squatting. Yeah, because you have to hunch because I'm tall. No, but, but I'm tall. Okay, here's my suggestion. Instead of doing that, why don't you lower down and put your and put your hips out? <laughs> <My phone's laughs> <out. Just laughs> we never you, stand why, during the why, podcast. Why don't you do this? Why don't you just squat down and put your hips forward like this? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. This like, isn't a good angle for my knees. Like, I need to be back. Okay, no, no. Like, like, I need to be back and You need and to do more bar classes. You need to tuck your tail. Oh, yeah. That's the problem. I need to do more bar <laughs> classes, Nicole. That's the problem with all this. <laughs> Not airplanes were designed to just shuttle people around like cans of sardines. Josh, what did we learn on this podcast? Uh, that, I mean, 9-11 really fundamentally changed the way that Americans view a lot of things, air travel included. Is peanut butter a liquid? <laughs> no, peanut butter is not a damn liquid. It's peanut a, butter, it's a, it's a partially hydrogenated oil. Case. It is like water is a liquid, but ice is a solid and steam is it's, gas. It's a, peanut it's butter a can be many forms. It's everything. It's a mix of things. But should we allow, be allowed to bring it on planes? Probably. I don't know. I just don't bring crap on planes. Just don't bring, bring anything. Planes. Don't travel don't with anything. anything. Never. Just, just a book bag and a book in the bag. Don't assume that any government agency is actually keeping you safe. I can't and bring ass- tweezers on a plane. Don't can assume I? that you have a right to comfortability anywhere. You have to make your own comfortability. Sometimes in the world. I get these weird chin hairs and I have to tweeze them. So I think I might need to bring the tweezers on the plane. Ew. <laughs> If you've been eating Jif or Skippy this whole time, head over to Spork to find out what peanut butter you should be eating with their ranking of the top nine peanut butters. All right, Nicole, we've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions I Like Casserole. You left me hanging last time, so now I have to leave you hanging. I'm a natural soloist. <laughs> Hi, folks. I am Ree from Colorado. You just waved away. I just want to give you yeah. kudos for how well your uh, Mythical Kitchen episodes are. Love them. But I also want to pose this question. What is better than the Tony C's? as um you know as a flavoring method i have not found one yet i don't like old bay i love tony c's i'm a tony c's fan heart emoji but i need you folks to test something maybe even with chicken i just saw the chicken episode chicken breast episode but please let me know uh i'd love to see an episode on a better flavoring method other than Tony C's. Oh, Again, I heart yeah. Tony C's. Love you guys. You do great. Bye. Hey, Ree. 
One, thank you for the very nice compliments. So kind of you. Thank you. We I appreciate run a, a YouTube channel called Mythical Kitchen as well. You should, should watch it. Out. If you haven't checked it out. We're so fun on that show. We're very endearing and talented. Adorable. I think. There's also more more characters. Yeah. There's <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're characters, right? There's more people. That's a whole philosophical debate that I'm not prepared to answer. Are we ourselves? There's, Are we characters? There's Are Trevor, we elevated avatars of ourselves? There's Trevor. There's V. There's Lily. Sometimes Annalise comes on. Maggie makes appearances. Yeah, they're all just character bits that we made up. They yeah, don't actually that's exist not in the real life. We got them all from central casting. Um, <laughs> is anything better than Tony Satcher's? One, I think you're searching for a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. <laughs> you, you, you have Tony Satcher's. Enjoy it. Um, sometimes Tony sees isn't the best flavoring agent for specific things yeah. like for example uh, like if i'm making shawarma i'm not going to use tony seeds to season it i'm gonna use shawarma mix or ras al hanout yeah um no i i'm a big believer in spice blends like i yeah it just shuts off the part of you that has to open up five different bottles That's and they right. put it all in one bottle mm -hmm. and so i've been big on yeah ras al hanout is a really fun one kind of like a north african uh spice did you know what ras al hanout stands for can I guess? Yeah. Is it top of the shelf or something? So, no, it's the owner of the spice shop. So, Ra Raz is like re race, which is like boss, and oh. Hanut is like spice shop. So, uh, each Ras al Hanut is different. Oh, interesting. That's like so the if, chef's special. It's like the butcher's cut. So, if you ever go to like Morocco um, or wherever, like the, the Ras al Hanut varies from different uh, vendors. Ah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, I taught Josh something. What's I, up? <laughs> you teach me something every day. Um, but there's also other Cajun spice blends out there. Slap Your Mama is very good. I use Slap Your Mama. Zatarans. I don't use much, much of Zatarans. Hey, that's a Tony C. But Slap Your Mama does really good stuff. Yeah. Um, other things I like grew up using, Montreal seasoning from McCormick's. <gasps> Montreal spicy Montreal steak seasoning. That's dank. That's really good. Underrated. I think that was like a '90s thing. I think so. Yeah, but man, if if you put that on a steak, it is still a lovely time to me. Big fan of that. A lot of people go into everything bagel, and just, to me, it doesn't really okay. match with a lot of foods that I enjoy eating. It's kind of a lot of seeds in there. Um, I like it. It's yeah. not the best. Tony C's is probably the best all-purpose American seasoning. I, I'd agree with that. It has all the flavors that you want. It's got yeah. onion, it's got garlic, it's got salt, it's got sugar, it's got paprika, it's got cayenne. Those are all things that I like on a majority of my foods. Yeah. Also, I looked up Russell Hanout and you were right. <laughs> it means head of the shop. <laughs> really? I, th yeah. I said top of the shelf. Oh, head of the shop. I but rice means king or head of. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, whatever. <laughs> I vaguely heard that before. Um, another spice <laughs> that I've been using, uh, Berbere spice. Oh, from Ethiopia. So Ethiopia, yeah. I have that too. Bro, I just shower my chicken in that it's now. It's so good. Yeah, fantastic. Berbere spice is delicious on avocado toast, actually. I love it on avocado toast with an egg. I've never had that, but I'd like to. So good. Um, but literally, go to your local grocery store, go to the spice aisle, pick out something that you ain't never heard of before. And do it, yeah. And just do it. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, the opportunity cost is really nothing. You just get chicken that tastes a little bit different for a month if you don't like it and that's fun and that's fun hey josh and nicole this is sam from eugene oregon hey, and sam. i just had a question eugene for you guys <laughs> about fermented foods uh, uh oh how do you feel about them have you ever tried uh experimenting with <laughs> making your own lacto fermented foods uh where you isolate the lacto bacillus bacteria just by goes. using salt in the proper proportions so uh Thanks so much for all your content, and uh, I love you guys. Bye. Love I you too, love man. You. Eugene, Tracktown, USA. The only place that cares about track and field in roughly the whole world. That's the thing. Sorry. They have a really beautiful uh, um, facility. Uh, when it comes to pickling and lacto-fermented stuff, I personally don't like doing it myself. But uh, my parents really like doing it. Oh. So, uh, yeah, my parents make their own pickles and their own torshi and their own uh, different kinds of pickled things. So whenever I go over, they put me to work <laughs> and um, they ask me to clean the jars out and to like make different like spice blends and stuff to go into like the pickles and the torshi. So I do it with my parents and it's really fun. They also have this like old wives tale that is not real where they put uh, dried chickpeas and that collects all the bad bacteria, which mm. is, I don't know if that's real or not, but um, they still add it in. <laughs> and I, I think it's a really fun bonding experience. Um, and then like in like, you know, six months later you eat it, you're like, yum. I have a complicated relationship with this mm -hmm. because 
Part of me is scared about the food safety of it all sure. because you are literally just creating new bacteria. Uh, so lacto fermenting is when um, let's talk about pickling, right? Some yeah. people are like, "Oh, the ingredients in pickles are like vinegar, salt, sugar, whatever," and it's like, no, like proper pickles, a lacto fermented yeah. pickle, which is to say, like the OG version. Yeah, um, you would just add salt to the vegetables and let it hang out, and let it hang out. And certain things like. Um, peppers, like cabbage, like cucumbers, they have lactobacillus bacteria naturally on especially the skins of it. Mm -hmm. And so that bacteria just, you know, the salt bleeds the moisture, natural sugars ferment, and yada, yada. And they eat, eat, eat. <laughs> Anytime you post about fermenting anything yourself uh, online, it's, somebody's going to come and be like, you're not doing this safely. And it's like, you think people like 500 years ago, they was just putting stuff in a clay pot in the open air. Like we fermented our own like, anchovy tuna blood garum, juice. Right? Yeah, we made Roman garum. That's cool. And all the recipes for making it were like, yeah, you just put it in the pot and let it set. Um, so I've done that. Yeah. You know, and I feel very safe consuming it. Um, and I fermented my own chilies at home, but I'm not doing it in a way that I would recommend to other people because I just yeah. kind of... I don't trust myself to do it. Yeah. I trust my mom to do it. <laughs> you yeah, know what I enough. mean? If I put in like an hour of research, I'd probably feel pretty comfortable doing it, yeah. but I I'm, I don't want to go through the process of sterilizing jars. Yeah. I don't want to do the canning thing. My mom... You know. Have you ever heard of Verju? Go yeah, Verju is like a mom, slightly fermented grape juice. My mom makes her own Verju. That's and, so sick. And literally my job was to like pick all the the grapes and sterilize the jars and stuff so Man. i've like i'm like an apprentice to pickling <laughs> and like i'm like an apprentice to that stuff but like i could not do it on my own like i need my mom's support to yeah. like show me how to do it and stuff i'd, I'd like to get more into it that sounds like a fun i'll thing. bring you some of her verju it's really good please it's what did she put it on this is a secret ingredient to her Shirazi salad. Uh, it is so good. Uh, Sometimes she just gives me like a spoonful. She goes, it's good for you. Your tongue is white. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, again, you know, tr traditional medicine works. <laughs> hey, guys. When buying Rice Krispies, the cereal, make mm. sure you get the family size only. Why? They're puffed. They're more of like a football shape oh, than that really? crappy, flaky shape. Wait, wait, wait. Also, wait, Rice wait. Krispies are delicious in grape jelly. Wait, wait, this wait, wait, wait. This is so interesting. Wait. Is this a very, this sounds a bit conspiratorial to me, but it could make sense. It could make sense. Because you can get products like um, the Flamin' Hot Cheetos, Doritos, whatever they sell in other countries. Frosted Flakes is a good example. They sell them in Mexico under the name like Zacaritas. Mm -hmm. Zucaritas. 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 Um, <laughs> Zacharias. Zacharias is a Jewish Mexican <laughs> Frosted Flake fusion. <laughs> and they're different. They're like sweeter. The flakes are different. Um, yeah, I think the actual um, thing that goes on top of them is different. Like it's it's a syrupy thing that hardens into like a shellac. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just being like a sugary coating. And so like all yeah. these factories are making different equipment. They're all trying to get to roughly the same product. Yeah. If maybe it depend maybe it'll depend on the regional taste and market, the et cetera. That are used. Of yeah. course, of course. And so it could stand to reason that there's a separate factory that makes the family size boxes. Totally. You know, like beer breweries will have different um, bottling operations for cans and bottles, et cetera. What did you say? Beer berries? Beer breweries. Oh, beer, beer breweries. breweries. I thought you said beer berries. I'm like, what are beer, beer berries? berries? <laughs> you just soak blackberries in beer for six days and get <laughs> drunk off them like one of those bears that eats all the fermented rotten fruit. Um, <laughs> no, I'm thinking of cocaine bear. That's cocaine bear. Cocaine bear. Um, but yeah. What were we talking about? I literally don't remember. Oh, dude. Rice Krispies. Yeah, no, I want to do a side by side and you see a bowl of Rice Krispies and a from family size and a regular one and see if it's legit or not. Need, I do believe you though. We need more yeah. fancy Rice Krispie options. No, I think they're perfect the way they are. Lacto fermented Verju Rice oh, Krispies. Oh, you didn't even talk about the grape jelly and. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, wait, is he talking about putting? What? How does he do it? I I believe, <laughs> uh, grape jelly and and like some Rice Krispies. You just mash time. it around and eat. Yeah. I'm it's a that. little crunchy snack for your tummy. <laughs> Amen. Sounds like something a baby would eat. Hi, this uh, is Chris. I'm not going to say my loud. last name, and I'm from Hazel Green, say Alabama. It. Say it. Um, but kidding. I think that dipping your bread in ice water during a meal is the elite way to go. If people in hot dog eating contests can do it, mm. and so can I. But my internet friends keep on making fun of me for it. And oh. I'm just really upset. I want someone else to weigh in on this. Uh, anyways, love the show. Thanks. Bye. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for listening. I, I get had, why they're protecting I, their identity. I had a quick question. Yeah. <laughs> what is an edgelord? 
An edgelord is somebody who does and says things to be considered deliberately edgy, probably because they lack attention, probably from growing up. And so okay. they seek out negative attention because positive huh. attention is harder to garner. I'm not saying this person is an edgelord, <laughs> but it's very possible that they might have some nuanced edgelord Doing tendencies. Doing things deliberately to get attention, which I get. I That's my, think, it's been yeah. my whole career. I'm you know, not, I, you're staring I, at an edgelord. I have no idea what my actual beliefs and personality is. So is that true? Is what comes out on the camera. I don't know, man. You know, everyone's like, well, just be yourself on camera. It's like, myself would just be staring at a wall because all I really <laughs> want to do is sleep. You know, oh, I just want to be by myself and hang out. Josh, take a um, nap after this, my guy. It sounds really nice. Um, but uh, comparing yourself to hot the elite eating. athletes in a hot dog eating competition, they're not there for pleasure, right? They're there to win. Yeah, they're there to win. The pleasure comes from the victory. Winning, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. water is merely a means to that end. That's right. What is the water to you? That's my question. What what is the end goal that you are trying to serve by faster dipping your bread, bread water? consumption at a rest? I mean, doing it like a restaurant is like you're trying to get elicit some sort of reaction. Sure, definitely. I think that's what's going. I on. I guess yeah. Well, no, I don't know. No, I was thinking like you think it has to do with like what's it called dysphagia? <laughs> yeah, were you, you think have it might be related swallowing? to dysphagia? I get the idea of wanting to make all your foods wetter. And that's if I have fine. a bowl of ranch near my bread, I yeah, will eat that. I will yeah, eat that. Dip, like, come on, you ever been to Cheesecake Factory? You dip the brown <laughs> bread in ranch? That's God, like that's good. classic. Oh, but that's like what I water. Eat for lunch right now. Don't do it. Don't do it anymore. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Should we do one more? Yeah. One more, Maggie. Come on. <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna make this quick. I heard that it has to be under a minute. Um, I'm from North Mexico. I'm from uh, Monterrey, Nuevo León, Nuevo Laredo. I, I currently live in Laredo, Texas, and I've been eating avocado toast since I was since I can remember, maybe four years old. My grandma used to give me this. I'm a 40 year old man, <laughs> and uh, for the fact that they say avocado toast belongs to or it was created in California. Of by millennials, I don't. Uh, I, I kind of resent that. Me too. We, we've been eating it for forever. I have never gone into the history of it to see who created it or what. But like this is northern Mexico food, uh, southern. I I guess south south Texas. But uh, anyway, just a big shout out. I'm a big mythical beast. I have a lot of mythical beast friends in Monterrey and Mexico. Oh, hell Saludos yeah. a todos. Los quiero mucho. Oh. Love you, Nicole. Love you, Josh. Have a oh great, great spot. Te amo también, homie. Te amo. That's <laughs> so sweet. First of all, one of my favorite messages you've ever gotten. My favorite band is from Monterrey. What's your favorite band? I think they're from Monterrey. Uh, the Warning. Shout out to The Warning. Oh, Come cool. on the show. They're we fantastic. do like The Warning. We should go to Monterrey. I would love that. Let's go. Um, totally. Yeah. Avocado toast. We do. Do you know who claims avocado toast? Like who gets who? madder than anyone when you're who? like, it's such a California thing. Australia. Oh, interesting. The country of Australia claims to have invented avocado toast as a thing. Like, I don't think it's Did, a government declaration, but, but avocados that's what Australians say. were started in Mexico, right? They're from Mexico? But so did tomatoes, so did chili, so did beans, so did squash, so did corn, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a Colombian exchange crop, but it took sure. a long time for avocados to eventually catch on a lot of places. Got but it. really interesting, when I was in South Africa and I like ate an avocado and I was like, yo, this is the best avocado I ever tasted. And they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, they've been growing them for like 70 years here. Wow. I'm like, what? And so it, they just found other climates. Avocados obviously take a sure, specific climate yeah. to grow yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they really have like spread the world in a way. Obviously, are from Mexico and like um like aguacate, right? Um, I believe comes from an indigenous word yes. as well. So mm -hmm. they have like, and I think it means <laughs> like roughly means scrotum balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which hey makes sense. You look at an avocado. Um, <laughs> so I don't know about the origins of it, but I mean the fact that you know he grew up eating it in Mexico, in northern Mexico, in southern Texas, totally valid. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense, and also the association of it with like rich people culture. Oh yeah, well, that's why we can't buy houses because we enjoy avocado toast. Yeah, go screw yourself. Also, you ever go to like a Mexican market and you get the actual because there's half avocados grown in California, it tends sure. to be a lot bigger, and there's so many different kinds of avocados. There are avocados. So Reed many. avocados, bacon avocados. Reed all avocados that. are so good. I love them, and it's yeah, fun to yeah, explore yeah. different avocados. But uh, you get like avocados from Mexico, um, and I believe those are grown year round. They're a little bit more petite, right? I used to, dude, growing up, I would buy them ten for a dollar. Yeah, it was different. And they're they're man. smaller, yeah. they're a different texture, but like avocados aren't like he said this model of like white millennial indulgence. No, it's of like an indigenous not. food that's been eaten forever. You want to know something funny? One time I went to a produce show in Orlando, Florida oh, before hell yeah. before I met it's you. Lit. And literally there were avocados the size of my forearm Dude. that were absolutely the most gorgeous insane things I've ever seen. An avocado the size of my head. And I'm like there's no way 
that people in America can claim this food. Like this has been the most gorgeous, unbelievable mm-hmm. agricultural thing to happen. There's no way it started here. God, yeah. I, I do love and putting it on God. bread. Putting was, it on bread. I remember ta- iconic. <laughs> <laughs> I remember talking to a Mexican food writer, and he was like. I hate the way white people fetishize guacamole. And I was like, so what do you true. mean? And he's like, in Mexico, this is at least what he said. He's like, in Mexico, guacamole isn't like an event. It's not an $18 app that you get table side. Yeah. He's like, a lot of guacamole is just one of the things on a salsa bar for certain kinds of tacos. And sometimes it's just water, avocado, chili, and salt. Americans love fat, dude. They just like to eat fatty food. We love fat. And we also like this sort of uh, exoticized nature of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, it's fun to say. And we love a pl- We love a, a yeah. show. We love a, a sizzling yeah. fajitas. That's the reason oh. that was the most popular Mexican dish. <laughs> yeah. Which is like a, a very obscure Mexican dish. And fajita is, we talked about this yesterday yeah. a little bit. It's like, uh, I believe, a, a northern Mexican for belt? slang for, yeah, like little yeah. belts. And it refers to arachera, the skirts. It's a whole oh, deal. Lord. But we turned that into a phenomenon at Chili's in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same thing happened with guacamole and avocado. Totally. Do you like table side guac? No. I love table side guac. <laughs> make me good guacamole. I don't need to no, see No, no, no. I love it. When I was younger, when I was like 19, 20, we would go to hookah bars. And uh, there nice. was in the valley. And there was one place called The Spot. And their guacamole table side presentation was epic. I think it's because I constantly like watch them screw it up. I'm just like, that's way too much like chili in there. Like, I love they're it. like, oh, the cuts on that are so messed up. I think this is just me being a and they're full always, blooded American, they're but I just love the table adding side it to block. like a molcajete and not actually pounding yeah, it. Well, and it's just like weird. They they do pound it. They do pound it. Really? Yeah. I I don't know, it's man. It's not pre mashed. Well, when I always get it, they're literally scooping the avocado and. But the are mashed. they are they pounding the other ingredients in there? No, but that's what cares? you gotta do. That's the point of it. No, dude. That's they the have point. they have four other tables to do it at. You gotta respect yeah. the hustle. <laughs> uh, avocado toast. Thank you so much for your yeah, for your great, statement. That's a great call. Really made us happy. All right, on that note, thank you for listening to a hot dog is a sandwich. We got new audio only episodes every Wednesday. New videos coming out on Friday. If you want to be featured on Opinions on a Casserole, hit us up at 833-DOGPOD1. I'm a ballerina. Give him a little plea, eh? Okay, okay. For more Mythical Kitchen, check us out on YouTube where we launch new videos every week. See you next time. Did you just get a slack? I think so, yeah. Who's in <laughs> Barack Obama just no slacked way. me? Oh.